Well, in in the uh, in the uh, spirit of these uh, little discussions we've been having the last few weeks, I thought I'd visit with you about France. Uh, you see, sitting on either side of me are a couple of trophies that are made by the company Christophe, or Christoffel, as some would call it. Uh, there's a museum in Paris that has these trophies. We happen to have more of them than uh, the museum in Paris. They're very important French silver maker, somewhat comparable to Gorham and Tiffany in our country. But we'll visit further about that. Uh, just wanted to get that out of your mind so you know what, what's going on here. Uh, you know, France is uh, a unique country. Uh, as you know, uh, people have visited it for, for centuries and uh, have had so much to say about it from, from uh, Thomas Jefferson and John Adams up to the present. Uh, and uh, it, its uniqueness is, is its geography in some respects. The French have been given something by the land that they live in, uh, if you will, by the hand of God. Uh, they, uh, they are surrounded on three sides by the ocean, the North Atlantic, the Atlantic, and the Mediterranean. As a result of that, uh, their climate is tempered somewhat. You know, we often commented, Brett and I, as we would travel through France, that uh, uh, it would stay light until 11 and 11.30 at night in northern France in the summer. Uh, it's so far, it's as far north as Maine, but it's not really cold. Uh, and the land is very fertile. France is made up of 18 provinces, some of which would be uh, Aix-en-Provence, or Provence, rather, uh, uh, Normandy, Brittany, uh, Alsace-Lorraine, so on. These are some of the 18 provinces of France. Everyone we consider, we call our, our provinces states, of course. And each one of those uh, provinces has unique agricultural products. And uh, some of them are able to put in uh, three crops a year. Uh, as you go south, uh, into uh, uh, Lyon and into the south of France, into Provence and along the Côte d'Azur, uh, near, near Nice, you'll see fields upon fields in the uh, late summer and early fall of sunflowers. And uh, there's a name that they have in French, which I don't remember, but it translated, it's, it's face that follows the sun. And so you'll, you'll uh, drive by these fields and uh, you have billions of flowers all facing the same way as the sun moves through the sky. Uh, just, you see things there uh, that uh, are new to you and that have a, uh, a certain, uh, they awaken your senses. I remember uh, as I go down to uh, California Adventure in, in uh, Anaheim, and you go on that ride uh, uh, soaring over California, and you uh, hear the streams and you smell the orange blossoms and so on, and uh, you really sense uh, what California is all about. Uh, it, in, in France, it's the same thing. Uh, and uh, so, they say that, that smell and uh, so on awakens your memories, and it really does. Uh, the smell of the, uh, what are the, the, the blue flowers that are in the fields that they make perfumes out of and so on? What are those called? It doesn't come to mind immediately. But, uh, my neighbor has some planted up and down at the batch. Uh, so uh, we had, uh, as we one of our early trips, 25 years ago, you know, we waited 15 years into our business before we went to France to buy, and then we hired a professional and paid him a substantial sum of money to take us and establish contacts in France whom we could buy from. And uh, we knew what we were buying. We didn't know the variety. And uh, we would go to a fair and there would be literally millions of items and we would walk through that fair which would cover 
30 or 40 acres that would take us all day and we'd almost have to run and we'd pass millions of items. And we select 15 or 20 items in a fair like that, which would go on for three days. Uh, but it was an educated approach to the antiques that we purchased. And as we went uh, into Lyon, uh, which is considered the south, it's actually more uh, east, it's about an hour from Geneva. It's a uh, thousand year old city, it's surrounded uh, almost as an island in some areas by the confluence of the Seine and the Rhone rivers. Um, we uh, were in an area called the Virbon, and uh, it was a hot summer day, and as you probably know, they kind of shut down business in France during July and August, everybody mass exit, and uh, so we're, uh, we're in this area that has little warehouses or garages in it that has sliding doors, and we pass this, this door and we, we look in it, and I was so taken aback on my heels, sitting in this little warehouse or garage was the most unbelievable dining set I had ever seen in my life. And uh, it was covered, had 18 chairs, one for each province. So it had all of the agricultural products carved into the chairs. And on each arm of the chair was the native dress of that province, uh, the hats that the women and the men would wear in their native uh, costumes. Uh, and then there was a huge cabinet. So we got in and had a, we had to call a fellow. We got in and met him a couple of days later. We had to wait around for it. And uh, we opened up the cabinet and inside, it says that it was carved in the large cabinet, which is 10 feet wide and eight and a half, nine feet tall. It said that it had been carved from the beams of the old Sorbonne. Well, the Sorbonne was established in 1150. So this wood was, uh, was uh, had started to grow in the year seven or eight hundred. Uh, it's just unbelievable. And uh, it's so embellished with all of these beautiful things. You know, here uh, we have these conventions and expositions for electronics and other things and uh, for automobiles. Well, in France they had expositions for art and furniture. And you couldn't separate the two because it was an art. It was all art. And it, uh, and it spilled over into various things. You had, and as they learned to, to, uh, to uh, build the furniture, they learned the old techniques, but they learned how to age the wood properly and how to carve it based on the grain and uh, how to put it together. And they passed this down from craftsmen, the journeyman, master craftsman, father to son. Some of these houses that did this had a genealogy that was hundreds of years old. So here we're looking at a masterpiece, which I had never seen anything like before and never have seen anything like since. We purchased it, brought it to Salt Lake City, it sat here. One of our clients came in and said, I want it. And that client bought it and it is now on exhibition at Utah State University, the Agricultural College, of course. So that's a little adventure that we had. And uh, you know, everyone should go to France. I, I suggest that, uh, that when you do, that you take in all of these beautiful and wonderful things. I had a woman who I've done business with for many years who's built a half a dozen homes using the things that we have in our shop. And I said to her one day, she's French, and she's worth hundreds of millions, and I said, why don't you go to France and buy? She said, Tony, why would I do that? You go there, you bring it here, and you put it in the condition it needs to be in, and you know what to buy and what's going to happen to the woods when it comes into this climate. So we have developed a profession based on our experience, what we have done, and where we have been. And we would invite you to come and see us, and we hope you're doing well at this time. All the best to you. Thank you.